motivates me? What motivates me? What motivates me? What motivates me? You'll see a you hear a woman say recording. I heard a woman say recording. I heard. Progress. You heard the woman. I, I, I heard her who, too. I don't know who that woman is, but uh, she let us know that we are recording in progress. <laughs> Folks at home, we are here tonight with a very special guest on Rue TV tonight. Someone I wanted to have on the show for a long, long time, uh, ages, eons, yeah, months, years, decades. I've got the premier entertainer, the major entertainer. Ladies and gentlemen, it is major entertainer, the one and only Mike. You can, call my... you, can, you can call me Mike. Yeah, I'm allowed to go. I I think, yeah, I could call you Mike, right? It's all right. Yeah, please, yeah, please call yeah. me Mike. Yeah, major entertainer is just a title. It's not my name. Well, I mean, it's an accurate title. It's it's you are a major entertainer, so it's 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 an accurate description of you. So, I, mean, I gave it to like, myself. Did you ever consider maybe legally changing the name from Mike Hickey to Major Entertainer? Actually, no, no. In in fact, sometimes people will call me major like yeah. out there who don't you know they don't and it, oh, uh, yeah. yeah it's a little it's a little bothersome in fact <laughs> it, it bugs yeah. me a bit hey major it's like, what major <laughs> yes private thank you for addressing me in such a formal fashion but they don't know it's mike so <laughs> yeah I, I don't know if i can call you major uh but uh yeah that that's it's very it's a mil it's like a militant nickname yeah uh, yeah 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 I I don't know if I go with it, but, but for the folks at home who 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 don't have any idea, uh, which is who, most, yeah, who Major Entertainer is, and this is going to segue into one of the first things that I want to say. I like doing this thing where I announce my segues because you know, in in Hollywood, you now you, you got to call your segues. You don't just let them happen. You say, "Here comes the segue." Here it comes. Um, so I was on your band camp, and uh, the description here. One of the things that really stood out to me is the last line in the description of it. I'm going to read it all because I know we have people watching at home who, who have no idea who, who Mike is. Absolutely, but, you do. Anyway, Major Entertainer is a Los Angeles-based, which is sort of a lie because I saw you in Philly. Uh, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, and, and yeah, I think you toured the UK too a little bit, right? You did a UK recently? Recently, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, we're, I'm, we're going to change that then. Major Entertainer is a... Worldwide professional opening act, deeply committed to self-promotion and social networking, able to quickly adapt to any situation in which entertainment is required. He shines brightest in front of a small audience who has never heard of him before. I, I, I was very intrigued by that last. I was very intrigued by that last statement, uh, Mike. You shine best in front of audiences who have never seen or heard from you before. And I know that probably happens uh, quite often when you when you open for certain people. Uh, can you describe why you thrive best performing in front of people who have no idea what the hell the act is? Well, it um, first of all, there's no pressure. They're okay, not good. There to yeah, they're not there to see me. They're there to see whoever they came for. Right. But, you know, like any other, you know, most acts that you go see, there's an opening act that you have to sit through. OK, so yeah. I don't know. I, I kind of have fun playing with that uh, element that like that they don't know who I am and that mm -hmm. I can basically do whatever I want. And um, I don't know. It's kind of fun to to just use that to my advantage. I mean, it's probably like a not not a great answer. I don't know. Yeah. I just I like playing with expectations or in this case the lack of expectations it's it's right. fun for me yeah i know i like that it's, it's funny you say that because as i was walking in okay so uh i saw mike and neil hamburger in uh philly in philadelphia this past uh september i think it was saw the late show the late show of course mike opened for neil and as i was walking in i saw two gentlemen uh, conversing about the show, talking about their enjoyment, holding a holding a, a vinyl of your new album. So I know I don't know if they went there with the intentions of seeing you, and then uh, or maybe you turned people in, into turn those turn those into those young people into uh, uh, fans on the spot, which would be pretty interest pretty interesting. You know, they, 
because you know you, the crossover you has you know if you, if you get Neil's humor you know you've opened up for other people too like Eric Andre it's 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 sort of a I don't want to say anti comedy but it's a you know it's it's sort of a subgenre of comedy so if you if you get that comedy you're going odds are you you're they're probably going to dig you too uh, so that's that's pretty interesting how you can kind of gain fans and 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 people who like who do this I mean I've known you for I I know you by by things like this. Like like the um the duck the duck the night up shirt with with, with a picture of, of Mike on it saying duck the night up so it's pretty interesting how you gain new fans uh, have you have you found that uh have the have you found that happening a bit where you gain fans who had no idea who the hell you are every single show yeah awesome it's, awesome, awesome it's uh, uh yeah something a couple of years ago just it kind of clicked i mean i guess i guess i've just been doing it yeah uh for so long that i don't know i just yeah i i every show i have people come up at the merch booth after the show mm -hmm. and our merch booth it's more of like almost like a meet and greet really i mean yeah. you know what it was like you were there it's just like there's a long line and anyone comes up who wants to you know have a conversation and we do um but yeah i always get some excited people who are you know excited about the things I was talking about or singing about during the show. And, right. you know, I don't know. We just kind of, uh, there, there's just kind of a little connection there from a uh, performer to audience. And, you know, I, I feel it happening. I see it happening. I see it happening both ways. I, I also know when it's not happening, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I'll, I mean, people will just come up and they'll be like, Hey, that was so fun. I'd like a shirt and a record or I'd like a shirt or, you know, whatever. Yeah, and if they and if and if they didn't get it, and if they and if they didn't understand it or didn't like it, the hell, they won't the hell, come up to me. No, the, the, they won't come up to you. The, the hell, yeah. with them. the hell yeah. with them. Well, the right? hell with them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, pretty much the hell with yeah. them. Yeah, but it doesn't. It of, doesn't bother me really. If, if it doesn't really bother me. <laughs> oh, you didn't like you didn't like the show. Oh no! What can I? Like, what can I do? Can but, I change but it's my really time? it's it, it's really like I don't know. Honestly, I used to be more, uh, not provocative, but I guess I would antagonize an audience. And I did it when I was young and I did it for a long time. And right. I don't know. I, now I just kind of want to make sure that everyone, you know, has like a, a good time, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, like I don't, I don't suck up to them, but, you know, I don't know. I just, I just kind of lay it out in a way that is, you know, hopefully pretty fun for them. Yeah, absolutely. It was uh, it was a great time, and I can only speak for that show. But I'm sure all shows uh, that you toured with Neil, uh, I I feel uncomfortable calling him Greg because I'm like an old school pro wrestling Andy Kaufman fan. I I don't, I don't like doing that. So I like I so when yeah. I ref, when I refer to to him, I'm going to refer to him as Neil. Uh, how's Neil doing these days? He hanging in there? How's he? He's yeah. Right? yeah, he's yeah. doing he's doing good. We've uh, Neil's hanging all right. Yeah. Since I since I last saw you, we've done you know a lot of shows and a lot of tours together, and and we actually have a hell of a lot more coming up in 2023. So yeah, yeah, Neil is busy. You know, Greg's awesome. busy too. But, yeah, but they're, Neil, both, they're, Neil, both, they're both they're both busy <laughs> at times. Neil's also busy. Yeah, yeah. So I should so I should I should point out to the folks at home how um, you know we just talked about discovery. Uh, you know, fans who have no idea becoming fan. How did I even know about? Uh, my Kiki Major Entertainer. Well, the first time I came across him was through uh, a human being named Tom Green, and this was uh, many, many years ago in the old days uh, of the of the sixties. I think it was early sixties when feels Tom, like it now. Yeah, it feels like in the early days of Webovision, which was basically uh, a broadcast studio that Tom had in his living room. Living room, mm -hmm. uh, living room area there, and uh, Mike was frequent, uh, frequently on the show in the early days. I think you said you helped produce some stuff backstage and stuff, right? And you were did some did some music on the show, uh, and then in the later years when he brought it back, I think it was fifteen or fourteen. It's fifteen. Uh, you even hosted some shows for him in, uh, in that uh, space he rented out. Uh, yeah. What are some What are some memories that you have of those early years of Web of it, which are really, honestly, very revolutionary. If you if you kind of sit back and think about it, th those those early years of Tom Green Web of Vision, what sticks out in your mind? Well, I mean, I don't even have to think about it being revolutionary. It just, I mean, it simply was. He was the first person doing 
what everyone is doing now, mm -hmm. everybody under the sun, and he was doing it before the technology was even able to keep up. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, back in the early days, it's so funny because the early days of the web o vision or, you know, Tom Green's House Tonight or w whatever you want to call it, Tom's yeah. web show. Right, right, right. For me, I'd already known the guy for, I mean, I, I don't I want to say 20 years, but I don't know if it was actually 20 years, but it was a long, I knew him since, you know, the cable access days. Right. And then I, then, you know, the massive rise to fame. And um, so for me, when, when that stuff started off, I, w I was like, oh, this is, um, this is a whole new era. This is, this is, uh, this is different than the old stuff, you know, because the old stuff is, you know, all, uh, uh, the MTV era and the pre MTV area, just the era, the classic, like, those amazing videos, just oh, Tom sure, yeah. street being comedy. Tom, the street yeah. comedy. I mean, it was genius. It mm -hmm. was absolutely incredible. My jaw right. was on the floor every week. And like I said, and I knew the guy and I mm -hmm. was still blown away. <laughs> um, so then when the WebOvision started, it yeah. was like, oh, this is this is the new stuff. It's kind of different than the old stuff. <laughs> and, and the funny thing is, is now that's the old stuff. Yeah. And, and like, like, like a, a guy like you, like, that seems like so i mean it is so long ago time is like flying flying we're all getting old and you know yeah ra racing to the end <laughs> but uh yeah for me it was it was just so exciting because any time that i would come down to la and i would i mean i, I remember when when he started building the studio and it's like, oh right. my god and I mean, you know so much went into it and um i don't know when that show got rolling whether i was at home in Ottawa or whether I was, was in LA, it was yeah. just like, what's going to happen tonight? And you'd flick it on mm -hmm. and, you know, it could be a smooth show or it could be utter chaos. <laughs> and, you know, when things went technically wrong, you know, it was, it was just part of the ride. And, and, you know, some, some of the classic web visions mm -hmm. the web vision moments happened when things were going wrong. Yeah. I don't know, man, it was, it, it was freewheeling. It was crazy. God, it, it was, was, yeah. It, it was fun to be there. It was fun to watch, you know, um, it really was. And, and we were just I, at I the know, ground, ground level of something. If you really look back, you know, that that summer, summer, I'll never forget it. Summer of 2006. It was, I don't. I guess we sort of realized it at the time how unique it was, but even but more so now because you see how innovative it was. Now the funny thing about that was, you know, it was uh, like I said, all those wires, all those cameras and tally lights and all of these equipments and 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 switchers and everything in there, and now everyone and their grandmother has that here. So yep. you can you can do you can it, it's 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 really insane. It, yeah, it, it's it's I don't know want to say it's sad, but it's um uh, I don't know. I, I really do miss those days. And uh, you know, I, I know you were um like you had just mentioned that those I mean those were my first days, my introduction to uh I mean I watched the old Tom show, but connecting with Tom, um, but you said you were uh, you're from Ottawa originally, right? Yeah. So, so you used to watch the public access show on on uh, uh, Rogers, I'm sure, right? Or uh, I or, mean, uh, or comedy I, yeah. comedy network and all that, right? It's, it started off at Rogers. Actually, yeah. my band, my one of my old bands, Rebo, we played the second episode of yeah. of the uh, the cable access show. So the first okay. episode. I don't think I was in the studio. The second episode, I was in the studio, and whether I my my band played on that in the rogers era several right. times okay. but yeah. i would often just go to hang out i don't know man it was fun it was it was weird like you know your mm -hmm. friends weren't weren't on tv all the time not like it yeah. is now yeah. where like all my friends are on tv <laughs> and if they're not on tv they're on youtube or whatever yeah yeah I yeah mean, just just to get your image onto a tv screen in, <laughs> in the 90s like what yeah and it's your show you, mean, you come up with all that yeah it was wild man it was wild i was i was glad to be around for that stuff and I'm sure you that that's where you uh, had uh, uh, first met Glenn, right? Glenn Humplick. Yeah, I, I met him through. I met yeah. him through the show. Yeah, and yeah. Um, Glenn, 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 a friend of mine. I've had him on uh, a few times, and I'm sure yeah. he he will be enjoying this show with some popcorn and oh, hi, uh, Glenn. delicious hi, beer Glenn. <laughs> and a delicious beer. Glenn loves his beer, yeah, and he, uh, he can watch it now that it's winter. If it were summer, he'd be a. Yeah. I'm playing golf. I'm playing. <laughs> I've got to play golf. 
I really, yeah, you know, I, I, I you know, we, we, we click as people, but the, the one thing I don't click, uh, I, I don't know, I'm not a big golf fan. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, 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 not a huge golfer. I don't, I don't go out on the, on the greens too often. I'm not, I'm not much all. of a golfer either, yeah. but. Mike, you mentioned uh, bands. Uh, you mentioned the name of a band, but weren't you uh, just doing my research? You were, you were in Daiquiri, right? Yes. Okay, so so did Daiquiri, did Daiquiri also play on the Canadian show, or or did they? No, Daiquiri. That after came, that was after the fact. Daiquiri came after. Yeah. Okay. I was okay. in I was in a band called Brandon Walsh. Okay. I was in a band called Rebo, and um, then. Uh, at some point, Lee, Lee and I from from Brandon Walsh, we sort we started doing Daiquiri and and uh, Glenn Humplick was actually a, uh, the guitar player on our first album. That's what I, was, and, I kind uh, of thought. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and we Lee and I had been doing these bands all through the '90s, and then around '98 or '99, we yeah we just kind of were just like, Ugh. we just kind of like restarted our whole approach and we just kind of just went like we just stopped over analyzing everything and we just kind of went for it and like wrote a bunch of songs really really quick and like glenn was like when he he joined as our guitarist you know he was so enthusiastic that it it like kind of fired lee and i up as well so it was like because you know enthusiasm feeds enthusiasm and it was just really fun like glenn's like yeah we're rehearsing tonight right yeah okay <laughs> like great yeah, you know so yeah. it was fun and, and yeah we we did a lot with with uh, with Daiquiri, and yeah, it was exciting. It was, yeah, that was around ninety nine is when it began. Two thousand, I think, we recorded the album and came and did some U.S. shows with Glenn, mm -hmm. um, and we did some like a lot of shows in Ottawa, our, our, where we lived, because it was so easy and yeah, really, really fun. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it was uh, interesting to note that those were, uh, you know, traditional music acts and then you kind of parlayed or kind of kind of uh shimmied onto or morphed into the form that you tour with now which is basically just if you haven't seen mike on stage it's basically just mike on stage uh with a microphone and a machine multiple machines i think right a few machines yeah a few machines and uh you know it's a different we, what um what inspired you to make the shift from traditional bands to the your current form of entertainment, which, by the way, is major? Tell us why. Tell necessity, us what necessity is the mother of invention. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. So uh, Daiquiri was happening, and we um, – Glenn moved from Canada to right. L.A. finally okay. for – for the the Tom Green show, right, and right. Lee, Lee Lee and I continued. We 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 got a few different replacement guitarists and bass players. We just kept going as a four piece with different dudes. Right. We kept we kept touring, and then eventually, I don't know. It just got really difficult as life life is difficult anyways when you're dealing sure. with different people different agendas different sure. everything yeah that's like why are we struggling so hard to do this mm -hmm. and then lee and i became a two-piece with a drum machine right and it became so much easier as a two-piece and we we recorded that way and because we were a two-piece we were going much more in the electronic direction instead of just uh you know four-piece band stuff and because Lee and I were very much on the same page with, with, with many things, I don't know, it was just much, much easier, much more exciting with the two of us. And like I said, getting into the like electronic stuff and, you know, pr programming beats Well, Lee, Lee programmed the beats and, uh, you know, just making sounds and making songs. And we, like I said, we did the hell out of that. Mm -hmm. And then years, years into it, um, Lee... Lee, uh, I guess he pretty pretty soon. Uh, he had he had a kid, you know, oh, really? a, well, a, a child. You know, those adults, married yeah. adults, you know, tend, tend to do. They tend to make humans. And and um, it didn't change anything for for us making music together. Yeah. Um, it just, I guess, I was a little more able to, uh, <laughs> you know, to, to drive ten hours to do some crappy show in someone's right. basement. You know, On and a whim. Was, sure. Yeah, Lee wasn't as able to do that. Right, so I right, started right. I started doing some solo stuff, even though I was still using Lee's beats. Right, and um, eventually I moved 
out of Ottawa entirely, you know? And so yeah. uh, I just kept doing the the solo thing, even though mm-hmm. I'm not solo at all, because, I mean, I play a lot solo live, but I still have Lee uh, helping me with, like, making be- beats and backing tracks. Right. And some other, some other guys also. Gotcha. Um, yeah. That's, ba- that's basically it, yeah. It's a, and like I said, uh, it is a really interesting unique I, I i like i like i like i like entertainment that intrigues and confuses people like like for, like we talk about the people who who don't quite know you or have se- haven't seen you before if they see your act they're kind of like what the hell is this and i kind of like i like that reaction i like that i like that what the hell is this re- reaction me I mean, too you know what i mean you know what i mean yeah it's much i mean people a lot of times people can't tell if if is this guy serious? It's yeah, like right, right. Yeah, it's it, kind of like this. I don't, I don't know. What you define serious. <laughs> Am I seriously trying to put on a good show? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Do I yeah. seriously believe everything I'm saying? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, speaking of things that you say, you know, you've got that that album out, and uh, you, you you do say some of the uh, some of the you know some of the lyrics uh, uh, in 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 the songs. Uh, well, one one song in particular is based on your love of horror movies, right? 80, uh, yeah. 80, 80, 80s horror, I believe, right? Not not sort specifically. Of. Yeah. So tell us about um, Basket Case and uh, and the Blob and <laughs> the Blob. Uh, and uh, Reanimator and why we why 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 we love these so much because honestly uh, they are the best. I love eighties. I, I don't know. I love eighties. I'm wearing a freaking creep. I'm wearing a creep show shirt. Right? I know it's, it's it's very. I don't know. <laughs> I, I guess that they just had such good style. I don't yeah. know. There's something really. I love seventies movies for their grittiness. Their grittiness. Yeah. And I don't know. It just seemed like there was so much um, leeway for filmmakers who are actual artists to make yeah. movies that i will watch them and i'll go what in the world who would fund like what was the intended audience for this movie um and and i like again those questions like who did they is this supposed to be entertainment this is the most depressing thing in the world yeah. and then in the 80s um especially with horror films everything just sort of became so much more bright mm-hmm. and garish and fun and outrageous visually and i don't know visually yeah and and of course the uh special effects technically got to the point where you know with the fly yeah, and the blob dead and the alive thing, yeah yeah dead alive we're we're yeah. looking at we're looking at visuals now that you know i mean they they're better than than cgi oh absolutely, at, you know yeah. it's like th- this was made this everything you see on screen happened like mm-hmm. i don't know it was just fun and, ex- and exciting and and yes the blob by the way yeah I've been thinking about the blob lately because I don't really feel like it gets the same sort of, you know, it's mm-hmm. like th- there's all there, there's the typical list of movies you're going to hear about. The blob is seldom on that list, but it no, should not be. Really. It's it's completely cheesy, over the top, like aiming for the mainstream style, like, uh, you know, ac- acting or right. I don't know. It, it, it's very basic premise, very generic premise. Of yeah. course, it's a '50s remake, but the effects and the visuals are absolutely second to none. Just incredible, just incredible. And, and I, I don't know. I'm a people, fan of melting people under, slime. I don't know if people understand the time it takes to do practical effects. I've done I've done a little bit of acting in, in some smaller indie horror movies, uh, many about ten years ago or so, and it is it takes forever uh, for for a lot of that stuff. And uh, you know, I had. Um, there's there's a recent movie that, that just came out. I want to say uh, last October. Last October came out called Terrifier Two, and the director Mike uh, is old school, just like us, and chose to use and spend the time to do all practical effects, build things, and he he did that himself. Stuff. He did, did he all, do his own effects? He did it all himself. It's amazing. I, I talked to him a few uh, a couple years ago about it. And uh, it's really amazing because I don't want to say the easy way out is CGI, but uh, that's what many, many, uh, you know, film producers and directors do these days because it's, first of all, it's cheaper, uh, it's quicker, and uh, it's less time consuming. But the fans know, and I think that's why 
fans took to that movie is because of the, the the practical effects, the practical gore, and everything. Uh, it's that it, they he built he made it on two hundred fifty thousand dollars and it made ten million dollars in the box office. So that's I think that's it, one or pretty, is that one or two? Part two, part two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and so that's can, another can, weird thing. Can I t- can I talk to you about Terrifier for a second? Yeah, sure, sure. Go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Um, over the last many, many, I, I'm completely uninterested in 99% of like modern horror, yeah. I guess, for, for the last, uh, I, I can't tell you how many years, just completely disinterested. Yeah. And I saw the Terrifier, original Terrifier, like uh, artwork, not Ark the Clown, but the, the, the artwork. And I was just like... Yeah. Just, just completely yeah. dismissed it. I'm just like, oh, great. Another right. fucking killer clown yeah, movie. Yeah. Who no, gen- gives a shit? Generic is about 20, 20 million of them on uh, streaming on Tubi. Yeah, yeah. yeah just yeah. A- any any video box with a clown on the cover, I'm yeah. like, fuck you. Yeah. Fuck this. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> this is so stupid. I mean, it's just like, yeah. it's like... It's been done, and yeah. I know it's it's probably going to be some like Charles Band full moon <laughs> bullshit, right. some puppet oh, master yeah. bullshit, yeah. some garbage shit, just something <laughs> I don't fucking care. Like yeah. ah ah. And anyways, and, you know all the horror conventions and stuff, and right. all this crap you see about garbage. Mm-hmm. I finally two people who I trusted. Well, one blog I trusted and one person I trusted mentioned it, it, recommended it, and I checked it out, and I was blown away by Terrifier 1, just due to the, it was so nasty. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It it had the tone that I haven't seen since the 80s. Oh, yeah. yeah. It just felt like, like something that you'd pick off the shelf. Mm-hmm. Put in the VCR, knowing nothing about it, yeah. and just be like, "Oh wow, that is <laughs> grim." And this movie had that; I mean, it had it yeah. in spades. Yeah. And and I was and I thought that the guy playing Art the Clown was yeah, like David, an absolute genius. David I mean, uh, David Howard Thornton actually had uh, two years ago. I had David on the show actually. So oh really? A really nice guy. Yeah. What what yeah. an amazing performance, man! And then yeah. and then uh, Terrifier two came out, and mm-hmm. my wife I, and I went to the theater. Just stop. I was, how are they going to make this last two and a half hours? Like, oh, you've yeah. got to be kidding me! It's amazing. I was entertained every second. Yeah, no, I was too. And uh, <laughs> I think I think I, I may have. Uh, I don't know why I misstepped, but I, I think I may have called him Mike. But the director's name is Damien, uh, Damien Leone, and, and oh, yeah. what a what a fantastic job he just got. I, here's the thing, though. I I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. It's a good thing for him. He's going to make money, but. Uh, he um are we what what do we have for time here? Oh, okay. Um he uh just got signed to some big uh movie deal production company that's gonna fund and and, and produce the next um part three. He's already signed right. for part part three of it. I don't know if that's gonna inhibit creativity or it will enhance it. It's gonna be interesting to see because a lot of times when you're handcuffed, you tend to think outside the box and uh work a little better, but we'll see. I think uh, what a bigger I budget think he, does. I think with the money that he was able to bring in, I think yeah. they're just going to leave him alone and just let him do his thing. I hope and, so. Uh, yeah. And and I bet he's going to be able to do some things that you know, not that he wasn't able to do before. They'll just look a lot more elaborate. Yeah, I bet you. A bit I more bet you. Bigger budget, I guess. But what what I'm dreading is the um, the 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 ten thousand cheapy well not the cheapy is the problem but the unimaginative ripoffs that are going to come over the next oh, year yeah. or two yeah, i'm dreading it right. dreading it <laughs> they'll be they'll be in the works i'm sure if they aren't aren't already because anytime yeah. they uh they that that happens uh, i want to give exactly. a shout i want to give it a shout out to, to a human being i was watching right before the show i was watching you interview this man and this man's name is harvey sid fisher you, had, Sid. you interviewed him uh, uh, for for a WebOvision episode. He's still mm-hmm. he's still around. Is he? Uh, yep. Is he still around? Yeah. That was he really is. really interesting. Really interesting talk. I was watching that right 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 before the show. And, oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I, I I have to splice in or at least put a link in the description of his uh, of his um, of his famous video there with the, with the singing and the dancing and the woman dancing and r- r- writhing and all that stuff. Right? Yeah. Was it porous? Porous? Is that what it's called? Taurus. Oh, Taurus. 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 There's one for every astrology yeah. sign. Right. Okay. 
Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't, but I, well, that was really, really cool. I mean, you had the chance to, uh, one thing I noticed about the show though, uh, Mike, yeah, you had, you had shorter hair. You decided now that you're the uh, major entertainer doing the opening up for Neil uh, on the road. Now you've got the long hair. What's this? Why the decision to go with long hair and, and how do you grow the long hair? Because I am, I am, uh, I am follicularly challenged. Mm. Well, I mean, uh, it's not like it hasn't been. A, <laughs> I'm jealous. And I'm jealous of the long hair. Honestly, I would, <laughs> I would love to have a luscious head of hair, but I don't have that. Hence, let, let, let me tell you, Rue, my, my hair is not as thick as it once was. Well, it's like, so, I, yeah. I can guarantee you that, yeah. but no, uh, during the pandemic, I mean, it just, I had it short. I mean, it was like long as hell when I was at, like in my twenties and right. I don't know, during the pandemic, it just kind of came back and I really don't know what to do. So yeah. it's just, it's just kind of sitting here now. Well, it's a damn good look, especially on stage. Thanks. You flip Thanks, it, guy. Again, it goes to and fro, goes up and down. It's, 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 it's a hell of a look. It's a hell of a hey, look. Hey, yeah. Yes. My Sebastian Bach. <laughs> influence coming through and i don't mean johan well yeah so um we both we both have human uh human jobs um but i think we're kind of alike in a similar sense because you know i i don't do stage shows and things like that i do stuff for youtube and and things like this of course but have you found that cr being creative and being weird and funny on stage and and your and and, and and music too they're all creative forms has that helped you keep your sanity and helps you feel balanced like what do you get out of that do you, does it make you feel because for me it, it keeps me sane uh, i don't know what i would do without uh stuff like this like how does it how does your how does your form of major entertainment make you feel uh as a person after you produce it um well i mean i guess it it's frustrating while I'm producing it, but yeah, it's hard. Yeah. yeah. But, but once it, once it's happened mm -hmm. or once it's happening, it's, it's, it's pretty satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. For like sure. there, there, for me, uh, when I don't even think about it anymore. I'm just constantly trying to do it. Mm -hmm. And, um, when I go up and do a show that I wrote from beginning to end, I mean, every word, every sound, every choreography, and I've I've managed to uh, execute it to my satisfaction. Yeah, it's just a just an amazing feeling. I, I I can't really think of a way to describe it. It just yeah, I came up with all this, and then I and then I executed it perfectly, and then I did it again, yeah. and then I did it. Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, sometimes you know it doesn't always go perfectly, and that's okay. You know, uh, right? Sometimes interesting things happen in the collapse of an idea. Sometimes yeah. they don't. Yeah, but. I mean, it's really only through mistakes that you will learn or, I'm, I mean, honestly, you go up on stage, unplanned things happen all the time. And that's where you get the good stuff from. It's awesome. Yeah. That's, it's, uh, you know, off the cuff stuff. Uh, yeah. He, that's where improv is birthed. And uh, those, those, those are the moments that you live in. And I'm sure yeah. you've, you've been in, involved in a lot of those throughout the, throughout the years. Yeah, I guess. I mean, yeah. There, there's been uh, as many missteps as as steps forward, but well, I hope I hope no uh, no no. At least um, I'm still stepping. Yeah. Well, speaking of stepping, I, I hope no during a performance, uh, a woman th th take off her shoe and throw it at you. We don't want that. No, there's yeah. there's never been violence. No, no violence. There can't be. You you have a you have an energy that is fun loving, comedic. And uh, positive, positive energy, always, mm -hmm. always. Uh, so I don't think that anything like a shoe, whatever, whatever. No, no, I don't think so. No, no. I wonder, I wonder though, because you, you tour with Neil, does anybody not, because we, we talk about, you know, if you're going to a Neil Hamburger show, you should, God, you should know what the deal is. But I wonder if anybody <laughs> got pissed off at Neil for like ripping on Gene Simmons or something and just like, you know, nah. sort of, I no, I mean, they get it. They get it. They get, they get not it. not yeah. at his own shows. Yeah. You know, when, when Neil toured with Tenacious D, yeah, you know, that wasn't his crowd, right? That was right, that right, was right. kind of like a a mainstream, you know, rock and roll Jack Black crowd. Yeah. And uh, most of those people, or a lot of them, like were not they were not digging it. You know. Yeah. Um, course, yeah. When I when I played 
I mostly tour with Neil Hamburger because he's the only person who will take me out on tour. Mm-hmm. A couple of years, a few years ago, I went on tour opening for kind of a, a big indie band, like a like a basically like a sincere indie band called Pinback. Right. Okay. And b- believe me, it was not it was not a walk in the park. Those people were not there to see my kind of thing. <laughs> Um, so th- I think that would be more of the, uh, the difficult stuff that, that you may have been kind of yeah. thinking about or referring to. If you saw that, sh- now the people who yeah. liked it, the people right. who liked it, they had the best show ever because okay. they were surrounded by people who were just disp- like hating it and yeah. wanted me, t- wanted me to know how much they hate it. Yeah. And, and I, like, again, I'm fine with that. It's not for everyone. That's for sure. I mean, to get really mad about it, I don't really understand. Yeah. It's like. I've been to a billion shows. I've sat through a billion openers that I didn't really care for, but I yeah. wasn't I wasn't making it my life's mission to make sure that they knew how yeah. much I didn't like it. You know? Yeah. I, I really don't care. It's gonna be over soon, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean that's that's how it is. And uh speaking of being over soon, I'm getting a countdown clock on my on my on my on my call here. That's interesting. How long- how long are your shows uh, usually? Well, usually they're an hour, but I think what happened is Zoom is some inside baseball for folks at home. I think Zoom cut it back to 40 minutes now. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sucks. I keep calling you Rue, Ryan. Yeah, Rue or Ryan. I mean, like, you know, it's either, you know, my, 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 my real name, my birth name last I checked was Ryan. And then the nickname is Rue. So it's just, I, I guess whenever I see somebody online for years and years and years, yeah. that's usually the name I, I see them by. Yeah, well, it was interesting that uh, when, when I saw you, you kind of you kind of knew uh, what well, you knew the name. And then you finally saw me in the flesh for after all those years and on Tom's site and everything. But, yes, uh, yes, yes. It was awesome. But. Uh, well, I guess we could make it a nice uh, tight forty minutes and when, and wrap it up. But uh, okay. man, no, we could we could we could go for forty hours, but that that'd be a bit much. So let's 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 make it a good good forty minutes. And uh, let me just say that for anybody at home, I want you to check out the link in the description for every one of Mike's uh, social medias. I want you to check out his Bandcamp. I want you to check out his website. Everything, all that shit's in there. Buy some. Merch, buy a duck the night up shirt all that stuff Woo! uh uh you, you would you like to have any parting words for everybody uh before we get out of here uh, uh, uh Mike? well i mean just nice to talk to you uh i don't really do a lot of podcasts um yeah. uh i kind of usually i prefer to let the act speak for itself but like since you know I've kind of peripherally known you for a lot of years. I just yeah. wanted to, uh, I was like, yeah, you asked me, of course I'm going to do it. Absolutely. Hell yeah. And we loved having you on the show. And uh, if this, if this freaking thing. I can't scream